feel like I've said sugar a lot just now. Brown sugar. Pillowy sugar. 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 It is your catchphrase. <laughs> I am sugar man. I am going to make blackout cake. There is a, or there was a bakery called Ebinger's in Brooklyn. It opened around 1906 and they were famous for this blackout cake. So it's a really rich devil's food cake that had layers of dense pudding and then was topped with a ganache frosting. It got its name because uh, during World War II, they would literally turn off all of the electricity to Brooklyn so that the battleships leaving uh, New York Harbor would leave undetected. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the cake. I am going to butter two eight inch cake pans. If you have some extra parchment lying around, you may want to just cut a couple of rounds and throw them in just as an insurance policy that nothing's gonna stick. I'm using a pastry brush. You can use your hands. My mom used to use a piece of paper towel, whatever works. And I just have a little bit of extra cocoa powder. You only need a couple of tablespoons. Um, it's just for ensuring that the cake doesn't stick. You could use flour, but I feel like since you're making a chocolate cake, you might as well use more cocoa. You want as thin a layer of the cocoa as possible. It's only there to make sure that the cake pops out of the pan easily. It's gonna give you a really nice dark finish around the edges of the cake, which I also really like. Okay, so our pans are ready. We are going to start by sifting all of the dry ingredients. AP flour, Dutch processed cocoa. I really like the flavor and the richness of Dutch processed cocoa. Um, it's not an even swap for regular cocoa. Um, and then I have baking powder and baking soda. And just give that a little sift. Honestly, in baking, this is one of the few times that I actually still sift things. The cocoa does tend to clump and you, you'll you get to the bottom and you'll see these little, like almost like stones of cocoa. And you can just push those through. All right. And that is nicely mixed. This is not your really quick and easy chocolate birthday cake. Um, this is something that you are going to have to dedicate probably a full day to do. So I have a whole egg and a yolk, vanilla extract, kosher salt, and five tablespoons of veg oil. I'm going to give this a little whisk, break up the yolks. This is fresh brown sugar. It's, it should be really soft. It should feel like wet sand. There is a way to revive brown sugar. You can transfer it to an airtight container and put a slice of bread into the container. And literally after one night, the moisture from the bread will actually infuse into the sugar and you'll get nice soft pillowy sugar again. So I'm putting a cup and a half of dark brown sugar. And we just wanna whisk this in. Make sure there's no big clumps of sugar in there. Okay, that looks good. This is so fun. I love cakes like this. Just dump it all in at once. I'm gonna give this a little stir just to get the flour and the cocoa wet. This is hot water. It's gonna help make the cocoa bloom. You wanna whisk this until it looks smooth. You can see now it's a little bit lumpy. As you whisk it, it'll start to get really glossy and shiny, and that's what you want. It'll start to kind of look like melted chocolate. All right, that is looking really good. So now I'm just gonna eyeball this. We wanna divide the batter in half. Normally I would actually weigh it out, but it is doubtful that anyone is going to do that at home, and I actually probably wouldn't do it at home either, so. And these will get baked in a 350 degree oven for about 25 to 35 minutes. So while the cakes are baking, I'm gonna do the pudding, which actually is honestly my favorite part of the whole recipe. The first thing we're gonna do is we're going to whisk up the cocoa. So this is more Dutch processed cocoa, because it's yummy. Uh, and then cornstarch, and that's gonna be our thickening. I'm gonna give this a little whisk just to combine them. And also if there's any little clumps of chocolate or cocoa, um, they'll break those up. And now I'm gonna add in the cream. It's just gonna help keep a nice smooth texture. We're gonna bloom up both the cornstarch and the cocoa powder. That looks good. It's okay if there are a couple of lumps in there. All right, so we're gonna add whole milk. 
And so I'm doing everything off flame right now. Like in a lot of pudding recipes, you would do all of this in a bowl and then transfer it to a pot and then bring it up to a boil. I wanted to make this as easy as possible. So we're just gonna pretend like this pot is our mixing bowl. I've got four egg yolks. That's gonna give us richness. You do actually have a flame on. I do? Oh shit. So off flame, we're gonna add a little salt. I've got some more dark brown sugar. I love dark brown sugar and chocolate. The molasses and the caramel flavors and a little bit of smokiness complements the deep, dark, rich flavors of the chocolate. And now I'm going to put this on medium high, bring this to a boil. This is definitely something you don't wanna walk away from. It's not gonna boil over uh, because of the cornstarch, but it will burn rather quickly and there's really no way to save it. Once the cornstarch and the chocolate burns in the bottom of the pan, you pretty much have to start over again. All right, starting to thicken. So I'm gonna reduce to low. You just wanna whisk. You'll see some lumps. It'll look a little broken, but the more you whisk, the lumps will go away. You wanna keep doing this for about a minute or two, just until you don't see a lot of lumps. We're gonna strain it just to get any errant lumps out of there. But you can see it, it just looks like really beautiful pudding. It's funny because a lot of components in this in this recipe <laughs> require a great deal of faith that it's actually going to work. This being one of them, it'll look really broken in the beginning, but you know, give it a minute or two and just whisk. All right, this is looking really good and thick. It's the consistency of pudding. It will thicken up as it sets. Now, as if that wasn't enough, we've got some milk chocolate and some vanilla extract. And then you just wanna whisk it until all of the chocolate has melted and no streaks of the milk chocolate remain. So now we're gonna take this over and strain it. You definitely wanna do this while the pudding is still hot um, because it, it will thicken up fairly quickly. Um, if you don't wanna strain it, you really don't have to, but this is just a, another little insurance policy that you're gonna get really smooth, beautiful pudding. I'm gonna save this pot so that I can lick it later and then just push the pudding through the sieve. Oh, oh my God. I love this pudding so much. And that is it. And now I'm going to cover it with plastic. This is really important because if I just put this in the refrigerator like this, or even if I just left this at room temp, there you'll get a skin that forms in the top of the pudding. So push it push the plastic down onto the surface of the pudding. You're basically creating a little airtight barrier. You won't get a skin on the top. And then when you pull it off after it's chilled and you whisk it, you won't have any little clumps of pudding skin, which is kind of gross. Now that it's covered, we're gonna chill this for about three to five hours until it's really cold. And then we will sandwich it between our cake layers. While the, what's happening? While the pudding's chilling, I'm gonna make the magic frosting. So I say magic because it's really stupidly simple and sort of unbelievable. And every time I make it, I kind of wonder, is this really gonna work? And then it does. Uh, so I am going to bring to a boil heavy cream, a little salt, and this is golden syrup. I love golden syrup. It's a, like a, a really mild version of a molasses. It, you still get the cane flavor. Um, and a little bit of the caramel. I'm gonna turn this up to medium high and I'm gonna whisk this and talk at the same time. The pudding is really, really sweet because I'm using milk chocolate. I wanted to give a nice counterpoint. We've got the dark chocolate and we've also got sour cream for a little tang uh, to cut through the, uh, the pudding. So we can just let that come to a boil. All right, so I just turned this off. We came to a boil. Now we wanna add our chocolate and sour cream and butter. We just wanna gently stir this, melt the butter, melt the chocolate, incorporate the sour cream. This is definitely something you don't wanna do on heat. There's enough residual heat in here. You can see it's like almost completely melted. I don't even think I'm gonna need the whisk. It's really good just like that. It's beautiful, it's smooth, it's pillowy. And then you're probably thinking, how is that gonna be frosting? Well, just you wait. All right, 
So we want to transfer this to a bowl. We just need to get it out of the pan and help it cool a little bit faster. And we're going to let this sit for about an hour and a half. We're going to stir every 30 minutes and magically it will thicken up to the consistency of this. And it's really strange. In about 30 minutes, it will start looking like pudding. Then it'll get a little thicker. At an hour and a half, you will get this. This is basically the end consistency that you want for the spreading onto the cake. It's really important that these cakes are definitely room temperature before you do this, because if, you, if they're even the slightest bit warm and you try and cut them, they're just gonna gum up and you're gonna get a really jagged edge. Give that a little tap. There you go. We're just going to reinvert this onto that sheet tray. We'll do the same with this guy. I'm going to invert this one onto the cake stand. Okay, so we're gonna cut both of these layers in half and we're actually only going to use three of the layers for the cake itself. The ugliest layer, we're going to crumble it up uh, and use it for the crumb coating around the sides. The way that I normally do this, if you don't have a turntable, basically just look for halfway, like make a little mark like that. And then you can just kind of turn the cake stand around like that or the cake, <laughs> whichever is easier. If you just keep turning it around and around, you will go through the center of the cake, just like that. We'll do the next one. This one I think I'm gonna go all the way through. It's nice and cool. All right, I think that this is probably our ugly layer. So you can crumble this in a number of different ways. You can just do it by hand, or the more fun part is pretend this is a box grater and just rub it around like that. You want really fine crumbs. Okay, if you can see. This is what your finished crumb looks like. Right now it's like really super moist. It's okay if it dries out a little bit because we're just gonna stick this to the side of the cake. This is the chilled pudding. Um, and you want to, before you start spreading this on, you want to give it a little whisk just to make sure, you can see it's like super thick. You wanna whisk it to give it, get it loose enough to spread. So we're gonna start with the slayer. And it's okay if it's not completely smooth. Nice thing about this cake is not only it tastes good, but in the decorate, it's actually really super easy to de decorate. And it's also very forgiving. So we wanna take half of the pudding. You don't wanna go all the way out to the edge because when you put the other layer on top, it's going to push the pudding out a little bit. Now we're gonna take another layer. We're gonna put this cut side down. The pudding's gonna start to ooze, which is why you don't wanna come all the way out to the edges. And if it's not completely level, you can use the pudding to kind of level the next layer on top. So the, the pudding thickens as it chills. So if this were room temp, um, it would be too liquidy to spread like this. This layer is pretty smooth and flat. So I'm actually going to put the flatter side up and the rounder side down. That'll give us a nice level surface in the top. And now the crucial step here is to chill the cake. All right, so we put this in the fridge about an hour ago. And really what we were trying to do is just firm up the pudding. So you can see it's not sticking to my finger anymore. That's kind of what you want. Um, and then we are going to take our frosting, put a little bit on top. This we just want to get out to the edges. We want a nice smooth, even coating. Not super thick. We've got a lot of chocolatey goodness in there. Put a pretty big dollop of frosting on the sides. There's quite a bit to get to fill in, in terms of the gaps. The first time I made this cake, I actually hid for a little bit because I was worried that Claire was gonna judge my frosting abilities. But the nice thing is we're actually putting a coat of crumbs around it. So it's going to hide all the little mistakes that you make. Now I'm going to use the rest of the frosting and just even out the top of the cake. And you can see where there's a little lip of frosting, you can just pull it in and use that to help you smooth it out. And now the fun part, or I really like this part. All you have to do is just go around and press into the cake. And you wanna go all the way up the sides of the cake just gently press, you don't have to go crazy. All right, 
So now I'm just gonna put this in the refrigerator and let it chill and then I will brush off all the crumbs, take off the paper and we will cut it. All right, it's been chilling. I dusted off the crumbs and now it's time to cut. I've got some very hot water, very sharp knife. I am going to heat up the knife. This is going to give me a nice clean cut. Um, not necessary, but you know, it's a, it's a cold cake. There's lots of really, you know, squishy chocolate layers that are gonna melt. And this is just gonna help go through. Here I go. Oh, yes, yes. That's Sugarman's size. Yes, exactly. Is Emily coming or is it just me and you? I don't know. Should we share one? Hi, Emily. I guess she doesn't care oh. for your cake. Emily, there's some cake. Thank you. Okay, of course. I brought my Michael B. Jordan mug oh, also. Oh, nice. Oh, wow, this is a big bite. Yeah. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my god, this is so good. Yeah, I'm like, wow. be happy. It's so chocolatey. Oh yeah. my god. I want like a pool of this ganache situation. I mean, we may have a couple of extra bowls over there. Ah, you can just take them up from your desk, please. hang out. Thank you so much. Thanks, yeah. Rick. Anytime. Thanks, I'm gonna get some coffee. <laughs> Bye. Notice me, Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> How could he not? Gaze into my layers. This is an amazing cake. Um, even if you don't do the pudding and the frosting, it's actually just a really good, easy, rich chocolate cake. So throw in a chocolate buttercream, boom. But you should make this cake. So Morocco, Morocco was around when I developed this cake and we, we have strong opinions about chocolate cake. Yeah. Psychotically opinionated. Psychotically, yeah. The moistness. Not super sweet. The crumb, like, really open. And, like, dark. don't try too hard. You know, like, no, don't no. try to make it something it's not. Like, it's not, it's not like a tort. It's not, you know, like a flat, you know, it's not like fudgy. It's not a brownie. It's no. chocolate cake. Also, it's a good vehicle for frosting and in this case pudding. I well mean, that's like, where we differ. It's like I'd be happy uh, just with the cake. I don't even need the frosting. Boring AF.